All right. Can everyone see us and hear us? We're live. I think we're live. Right. This is backstage with Chris. We are doing the carnivore quesadillas, and I'm also going to do a keto quesadilla. And as a bonus, if you guys stick around all the way to the end of our cooking session today, the last thing I'm going to do is make a chipotle cream dipping sauce for the quesadilla. And I'm also going to show you how I make guacamole for the keto of you out there who would like to have guacamole to go with your quesadilla as well. So we're going to have a good time today backstage. Uh, yes. Yeah. Absolutely. freaking lutely Yeah. Cool. Um, if y'all can, comment down below. Let me make sure y'all can hear and see us okay. Uh, get my phone over here. Tell you know, us where you're watching from. Say hello in the comments. Let us know if you hear us and see us all right. All of those, all of those wonderful things. Awesome. Uh, we got Southern Keto in the house. Hey, Victor. He says, making dinner now so we can watch this while oh, we eat. All right. What are you making for dinner, Victor? I want to know. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we got Rain Can Cook. Yeah, there he is. Absolutely. Just finished my dinner and having my coffee. Yes. Oh, coffee sounds really good right now. I can't have coffee this late, but it, I always love coffee. It doesn't nice matter what time it is. A nice iced coffee right now would be uh, yes. amazing. Yes, an iced coffee or one of those really nice, like, sip it on it Italian espresso type mm. coffees, something like that. Speaking my language. Yeah. Speaking my language. Of course, 22Q cat in there the house. There she is. She's, she's here. Yeah, she's here. Yeah, what's going on, Lynn? Thank you for joining. Uh, we got Beth. Hello, Beth. Uh, we got, uh, your parents are watching. Hello, mom and dad. Say hello, Tiffer and Ash. Mom and dad are here. Um, we got someone watching from Alaska. Alaska? Yeah. Oh, that's a little bit of a ways away from Tennessee. Um, Addicted to Antler says, hit the thumbs up button. Yes, yes. Thank you so much, my friend. Addicted to Antlers is here on like all of my videos and all my live streams. Super cool. Super appreciate the support. And uh, oftentimes is one of the first people or sometimes the first to comment on my new videos when they drop on Saturdays. So uh, that is uh, that is an on top of it fan right there. We like that. I like it. So. Um, Southern Keto, you asked what they were having for dinner. Mm -hmm. He says, we are doing some Italian sausage with my marinara sauce and my egg, li egg life noodles. Yeah. Super simple, delicious dinner. That sounds great. Guys, if you don't know who Southern Keto is, Victor and I actually did a live um, not a live, a, a jam session video together this past Saturday where I did carnivore manicotti and then he did his keto manicotti two different ways. That was an incredible, incredible recipe on both sides and uh, you guys should definitely go check that out. And I actually have linked in that video his marinara sauce video and I'm actually going to be trying some of it soon, so I'm looking forward to that, but it looks amazing. So you guys go check out that video, and if you haven't, go check out Victor at Southern Keto as well. Super cool guy and good friend and super supportive. Great, great to have him here. So Absolutely. Yeah. Hey, by the way, uh, shout out to Scott Babel. He says, hey there, finally joined the 100 Pound Club today. Yes. And your recipes played a big part in that. Thanks. Scott, congratulations on that. That is an incredible feeling when you cross over that barrier. And if you guys don't know, I've lost about 130 pounds doing keto and then carnivore. And Scott is apparently racing up behind me. He's trying to catch me, which is fantastic. 100 plus pounds. We need to come up with something that we say here at Chris Cooking Nashville every time someone has something to celebrate like that. So yeah. I don't know if that's like, a, maybe that's like a rock on. I like I like that. We'll, 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 we'll rock on for Scott. So everybody rock on in the comments for Scott. So Heck yeah. that is that is fantastic. So well, yeah, let us know if you guys are tuning in, where you're watching from. If you have questions for me, drop them down in the chat. Um, Ash will try to get to as many of those as possible. So last week's live stream, by the way, I know there's a lot of questions we didn't get to, different things we just could not keep up with everything. Y'all, last week's live stream was very busy during the live stream, and even after the fact people have gone and watched it, it is over 23,000 views. Who would have thought that beef patties would get that many people that excited, but I'm so happy that everyone is enjoying that video and that you guys all tuned in. So like, subscribe, share. There's a share button down below this video. Let your friends know that I do this every week because the more we hate people we have here, the happier we are, and the more questions we get to answer, more people we get to help. So let everybody know we're here. 
Awesome. Yeah. Uh, Diane actually said, by the way, speaking of your burger patties, mm -hmm. uh, made your burgers yesterday. Wow. Game changer. Tender and juicy. Oh, Diane, I'm so glad to hear that. Thank you so much. Yeah, that honestly, just that technique of being able to do those patties that way, it just makes such a huge difference, especially when you can't go outside and get those nice grill marks or if you live someplace like we do where I can't have a grill. So. But yeah, speaking of recipes, so I'm gonna show you guys what I have going on here. And if you have questions, drop them into the chat and we'll, we'll talk about it. So right here we have uh, some of my carnivore tortillas. So I just made one batch and this made three like larger size tortillas. And that's gonna make some beautiful quesadillas for us. So those are sitting there ready to go. Um, along with that, I'm gonna do the, the quesadillas tonight are gonna be chicken and cheese. So I have chicken right here in the middle. This is just cut up into small pieces, chicken thigh, and there's some lime juice on it and some garlic and some fajita seasonings and things. Any seasoning that you like or don't like, modify it how you want, it's always optional. But that is basically sitting there marinating in that. And uh, I have cheese, this is just a Mexican blend cheese back here. Use any kind of cheese that you want. And then for Ash, because she does keto, and she really, really enjoys her Mexican food. I'm going to do a couple of keto things here. I might even have a little of it. So if you're a strict carnivore, please don't don't yell at me. I, you know, I'm not 100% like all of the time, every single day. It's just 98, 99%. So for her, I'm going to do some fajita veggies. This is red onion, bell pepper, and there is a fire roasted half jalapeno in there. I have that. I have a little bit of tomatoes cut up that's going to go in with the fajita veggies there. And then over here we have some more tomato, red onion, and jalapeno. This is going to go into the guacamole, which we'll make out of the avocados there. And I've got some garlic and some fat and lime and cilantro and things for the cooking portion. And then over here, this is one of the things I'm going to show you right at the end. This is a mixture of some sour cream and some mayo. And we're going to put some other great things in that and make a chipotle sauce to dip the quesadillas, which honestly, I think it's the best part of the entire recipe. So stick around to the end so you can see that. So <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and get started. You guys have questions, let Ash know. Drop them down in the comments and we are going to talk yes. while I cook. Absolutely. Uh, while I get caught up on reading, I just have to say I am so excited for this live stream tonight. Mexican food is my favorite, so yep. I am I am pumped. Told her um, I was going to do this, and she got all excited. I did. I was I was very happy. Um, Lisa Nick says hello from Nashville to Nashville. Hope to catch one of your shows. Well, well hey, hey there, neighbor. Lisa. We awesome. would we would love for you to come out to a show. If you guys don't know, we are professional musicians, and this is Ash Taylor. This is my favorite country artist. Uh, I also happen to play lead guitar and do band leader stuff and manager stuff for her. She's an incredible artist. Go to ashtaylor.com if you haven't heard the stuff that we do. And she's also my wife and the cameraman tonight. So everybody put Ash down in the comments and let her know you appreciate all the work she's doing because she's literally reading comments with one hand and holding a phone with the other and her shoulder hurts by the time we get done with this every week. So she's she's sacrificing for you guys <laughs> and for me. Sacrificing my shoulder. Um, 22 QCAT says, I wish my kitchen counter looked all nice and organized like yours. I just throw it together. Well, to be perfectly <laughs> honest with you, I normally do too. This is just because I'm doing this on a video and it makes it much easier. Yeah. Um, but to truthfully be honest you know, with you guys, if you're trying to cook and you're trying to get better at this kind of stuff, this process right here, it takes a little more time, but it makes cooking way less stressful. This is called mise en place, which is a French term for getting all of your stuff ready. All of your ingredients are ready so you can throw them together and cook. If you do all of your ingredient prep and then all of your cooking, it makes it much easier to time everything and that way you don't have to worry about burning stuff or forgetting things or whatever. So if you're cooking a big dinner for people, walk through it that way. It'll make a big difference to have your mise en place ready to go. That is awesome. Um, Rankin Cook says, Chris, thank you for linking your tortilla recipe for us. Yes, you're very welcome. Yeah, if you guys have not seen it yet, that tortilla recipe is a good one and it is in the description box of this video. Also, I know that there have been a few people that have told me they've had a hard time with those tortillas falling apart. So here's the thing about that recipe. One, if they're falling apart, you probably need more egg white powder, okay? So maybe the water content of your sour cream or your eggs or something else are different than mine. But the other thing is there's a quarter cup of heavy cream in that and it says more or less as necessary. So you want your batter to be pourable and thin, but if you overdo the heavy cream, if you have a higher water content in your, in your sour cream, it's very difficult to get those to hold together. And you also need a good nonstick skillet or crepe pan of some kind 
so that it comes off easily and you need to play with your temperature so you figure out exactly how your stove works. So if you're having any issues with that, more egg white powder, less liquid of some kind, whether that's the cream or you know a watery sour cream or whatever, and then play around with your temperature and you'll get it figured out, I promise. I love it. Uh, Warrior says, love, love your lives. Watching from Tampa, Florida. Oh, thank you so much. So I have a little bit of lard in a large skillet here. And this is on medium high heat. We're gonna turn that down just a little bit. It's starting to smoke. We're gonna put our chicken in. And if it don't sizzle, something's wrong. Get it back out of the pan if it's not sizzling. And now we've talked about this in live streams in the past, but I'm poking at that chicken, getting it all touching the hot part of the pan, and then I'm not gonna play with it. I'm gonna let it sit, because we're gonna get some color on that. It's gonna be all in the sorts of nice flavor. I love it, it smells amazing. And then I'm gonna amazing. wash this bowl out too. Awesome. Uh, smells so good, babe. So, so, so yeah, good. Yeah, it's already smelling good. That lime juice and the garlic on there and that fajita seasoning. Mm -mm -mm. Super good. Ellie B says, this is my second Chris Live that I've caught. Let's go, y'all. All right. Thank you so much for coming back. I must have done pretty good on the first one that you saw then if you felt like it was worth coming and hanging out with an old redneck again. <laughs> um, Dinette Thorpe says, can't wait to see you Sunday with Anita. Oh, yeah. I'm doing a live stream with Anita from Ketogenic Woman on Sunday. It's going to be a really interesting video. We're going to talk about this idea of transitioning from a standard American diet to something like keto and carnivore and using recipes like mine to be able to do that because there's a lot of people that think carnivore or keto should be an overnight switch and it's just not for most people like that's okay so if we need recipes like this to kind of get in the groove of the low carb lifestyle that's cool that's why I do what I do it works for me it stabilizes me it might work for you too so that's what we're doing here I love it yeah, that's going to be awesome. Yeah, while well, I've got the chicken working, I've got another pan, which is also medium high, and our fajita veggies are going to go in there. And this is also on a higher temperature because I want to get color on the fajita veggies as well. Now, when you put something like that in, veggies have a high water content, and we have to break them down to get them to caramelize. Always add just a little pinch of salt. You don't have to add a lot, but add a little pinch of salt. I also season my food because I don't like bland food. I like it to taste like it's been seasoned. Huh, imagine that. Imagine that. Imagine that. Um, by the way, honey, you just got a $5 uh, super thanks. Uh, says, thank you for the tips on the tortillas. I will try them again soon. Oh, you are so welcome. Who's that from? Uh, that's from Yvonne Antill. I'm sorry. Oh, Yvonne, thank you so much. I am more than happy to help. Here's the thing, guys. Sometimes, you know, I'll get messages from people that say, hey, I tried this recipe of yours and it didn't work, I don't know what I did wrong, you can send me a message on social media, you can come find me in the ch in the comments section on YouTube, like, find me wherever you can, send me a message, or email me on my website, chriscookingnational.com, tell me what the issue is, and I will do everything I can to try to help you address it, because sometimes your gear is gonna work different than mine, or your situation is a little different than mine, and it just takes a little practice, but I'm more than happy to diagnose what went wrong, and try to help you as best I can so you can be successful at it too. I'm not gonna just leave you hanging or give you recipes that don't work. Here to serve. Uh, let's see here, babe. Lots of people are saying they're excited for these quesadillas. Yeah, you guys see the color on this chicken we're getting now? There's a little piece trying to run away. So you can kind of see the brown color that we have that's starting to come out of that chicken. The only way to get that is to get that temperature up and let the chicken sit. I love it. We do the same thing on the fajita veggies. Awesome. Yeah, see that there's caramelization starting just a little bit on those onions. That's exactly what we want to see. That and the bell pepper starting to soften down. These we don't have to get it on quite as quickly because I don't want to overcook my chicken, but I want to cook my veggies nice and soft so that when they go in ashes quesadilla that you're not like chewing on big hard pieces of veggies. Absolutely. And that's bell pepper, red onion, and half of that uh, smoked jalapeno that I did with my blowtorch. That's awesome. Um, Paul Jim's Farm, by the way, says, I'm on a soft food diet since having dental implants. 
Lots of your recipes are great for the carnivore folks. By the way, I have the implants in Nashville. We'll be back in July. Yeah, very cool. When you guys come back, say hello. And uh, who knows, maybe we'll, maybe we'll be able to swing by a coffee shop or a steakhouse or something and say hey to you when you're here. Absolutely. Great. So glad you're enjoying the recipes. If you guys didn't know, if you have any kind of dental work thing going on, I have a egg pudding recipe, which is based off of the Maria Emmerich one and then the Two Crazy Ketos one. I did my own way of doing it, but I have a chocolate version. I also have a savory version, which is like just eating a hot bowl of chicken soup, but in egg pudding form. It's incredible. And when I had to have my wisdom teeth taken out, those is what I lived off of for several days. Absolutely. And they're good. Mm-hmm. Delicious. If you just type in Chris Cooking Nashville Egg Pudding, you'll find it in the search box. Awesome. Um, Janine Council says, been doing carnivore for four months. Did keto since August of 2019. I've lost 70 pounds and my husband has lost 60. Um, he's at his ideal weight now. Your recipes have helped me so much. Thank you so much. That is a Chris Cook in Nashville rock on right there. That is so fantastic. I love hearing about stuff like that, guys. If you have a success story like that, put it down below. Somebody else sees your success story. It may be the thing that makes them decide they can try this too. So fantastic. That's amazing. Congratulations on that. Huge. Um, Beth Mahoney has a question on your chicken here. Yep. Uh, do you ever velvet the chicken before you cook it for fajitas? Yes. Or do you, do you, yes. Do, yes. Hello. Yes. So the fact that you even know what velveting is makes me very, very happy. Okay. So for you guys who don't know, velveting is when you take essentially a uh, an alkaline solution. Usually it's going to be uh, baking soda and egg white. And then the way the Chinese chefs do it is they'll also add a like a starch, like corn starch or potato starch or something, and oil and all that kind of stuff. You can totally do that, but if you're doing the keto carnivore way, the best thing you can do to velvet your meat, and what it does is tenderize it, and the best way to do it is you take egg whites, no yolk, just the whites, whip them up with just a little bit of water and a pinch of salt, and you add some baking soda to it. So for like one egg white, a quarter teaspoon of baking soda is usually plenty. Whip that up, as many egg whites as it takes to cover your meat, and then as many quarter teaspoons as it takes to match your egg whites. You whip that all up and you make that mixture, pour that over the meat, massage it through the meat, and let it sit and rest and marinate for an hour to four hours, something like that. It'll tenderize your meat, and you can definitely do that. I don't generally do that with chicken thigh because it's already super soft, but if I was doing steak, that would be a fantastic way to do that. And then what's really cool is you add your fajita seasoning in with that egg white and all of it sticks to the meat instead of all of your seasoning coming off when you cook it. It also brown up really nicely with that little bit of egg white around it too. Huh, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, Julie Highland says, my husband is doing carnivore since finding out he has cancer. Your recipes are his go-to when he's hungry. Thank you for helping me to keep him getting his calories in. First of all, I'm so sorry you guys are dealing with that and we will pray for your husband for healing, but I am so glad that you're here and you're sharing that because it means so much to me to know that my recipes can have that kind of an impact on somebody and that it can mean something to somebody. That really does my heart a lot of good. So thank you so much for being here and very, very best wishes and prayers for your husband. Absolutely. Um, you probably could give Sam I am uh, a little bit of uh, insight on this. Okay. Uh, says, I'm kind of scared to try your recipes. They're so out of the norm, especially the mashed potato one. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So I've, I've been told that my recipes look very difficult. And I understand a little bit of why people feel that way because I'm doing very weird things. A lot of times it's based on classical cooking technique. Um, Here's the deal. I am just a self-taught home cook. My mom taught me, my great-grandmother passed on things to her, which is what she taught me. So in an indirect way, my great-grandmother taught me. Uh, even my grandma on my mom's side, she didn't really cook that much, but when she did, she was good at it. And even she taught me some stuff. My dad is fantastic on the grill and the smoker, so I've learned from him too. Um, I've just learned from a lot of people and I've just taken the time to study like Michelin star chefs. Like I love studying really accomplished chefs. I think it's very cool and it's really neat to see what they can do. So I've just learned those techniques one at a time. So when you watch my videos, if it looks daunting, just follow what I do every single step of the way one by one and give yourself plenty of time. The first time you do it, it is going to take a while. 
But as you practice and as you learn this, you will get better. And it's actually an interesting point in the description of this video I put down there explaining to people that I don't do written recipes for my live stream recipes because these are not really recipes so much as they are ideas and cooking concepts. This is really about learning how to cook intuitively by sight, by smell, by taste, and sort of intuition. And the more you practice that, the better you get. And if you do a little bit of practice of that, you will be amazed how quickly you'll get better at cooking. You can't ever get that fully by just following a recipe word for word. You start with a recipe, but then you go from there and you start learning how to modify things according to your own tastes. You learn how ingredients work and you can do really cool things with food. So I know some of my stuff is a little intimidating if you have not done it before, but I promise you can do it. And even if it takes you a couple of tries, you will get it. No need to be scared of it. Just go for it, and if it doesn't work out perfectly the first time, that's okay, try it again. I've messed up plenty of things in the kitchen. So I'm gonna put the tomatoes in now. I've cooked these down, they're caramelized. Tomatoes cook a lot faster. So that's why we're gonna put those in last. Awesome. Uh, so many people are talking about some of their favorite recipes of yours. Yeah. Mac and cheese and mashed uh, yeah. potatoes and all that definitely worth the work. For yeah, yeah, sure. gotta look, gotta love those uh, those mac and cheese and mashed potato type recipes. Um, those are those are fun ones, and I'm really glad you guys enjoy those so much. I know yeah. I sure do. Sam, I am said, okay, I will try it. Thanks for the encouragement. You are so welcome. And look, if you have trouble and it doesn't work out, one, try it again. Two, let me know what trouble you had, and I will help you as best I can to, like I said, diagnose because I'm just here to help you guys and try to teach you how to do what I do. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so I dumped those tomatoes in. I'm going to turn this down on low now because we have plenty of color on the onions and the peppers. This is going to make some incredible fajita veggies. I'm also going to spread all of the veggies out to the side and I'm going to show you something really cool. If you put your garlic in with veggies like this at the beginning, by now your garlic would have burnt. So now I'm going to take my chopped garlic for my fajita veggies here. And now I'm gonna dump it in because the fajita veggies are almost done. And we're gonna cook the garlic later in the recipe. And I'm going to, because this is Ash's keto thing here and I'm not worried about these fajita veggies being carnivore obviously because they're veggies, I'm gonna add just a little bit of olive oil just to kind of help speed up the cooking of that garlic there. And that'll be a nice little coating of fat and flavor on those veggies too. Mm, getting so excited. <coughs> um, let's see here. Uh, Joanna Farrell says, it will be two years for me come August 1st. I've lost 130 pounds. Rock on, that is fantastic. Uh, doing carnivore, but when I cheat, I do keto. Yep. Uh, like the Nike commercial, just do it. Yep. That's, <laughs> that's awesome. Honestly, that's, that's really what I do. Like I do carnivore 90, 95, 98% of the de time, depending on the week now, because I did my 365 days all carnivore with no cheat meals. And now like occasionally I might throw in a little bit of some veggies or some extra spices or sauces I wouldn't have normally used, but I also know which ones bother me and which ones don't. So I avoid the ones that bother me. Mm -hmm. makes a big difference absolutely um linda uh says hi chris and ash happy first day of spring oh hello linda i love all your recipes i will be so happy when you can do your cookbook also where can i purchase ash taylor's shirt i love her country music <laughs> yes absolutely so the cookbook as soon as I can afford to quit the day job, that's going to be the very first project I start work on. Um, I just, right now, I just don't have time. I'm running between 100 and 120 hours a week between the four jobs that I work. So I promise you guys, when I have the time, as soon as I can quit the day job, I will definitely start working on a cookbook. I've had a lot of requests for it. As for the t-shirt, thank you so much for asking. You can go to ashtaylor.com and she has a merch section on there you can get shirts and hats and cups and all kinds of fun stuff i actually have merch on my website too if you guys are interested in a chris cooking nashville t-shirt or hat or something like that i've got some stuff also awesome <clears throat> um i love what dinette thorpe just uh said uh said i have made many of your recipes for my husband he isn't keto or carnivore and he can't tell the difference yes so here's the deal guys sometimes there are recipes that are really good but they're still keto and carnivore things that you can tell are keto and carnivore. I try to make as few of those as possible and I really try to make as many as I possibly can 
that just taste like good recipes that no one would ever know is keto or carnivore. And it's, I mean, you know, sometimes I get better than other times, you know, with results and stuff, but overall, that's what I'm trying to do because I don't think you should have to sacrifice on flavor and enjoyment of your food just because you're eating keto or carnivore. Agreed. So these veggies are done, and you can see these are beautifully roasted, nice and soft. So we're just going to take those out so they don't overcook or burn, but they have a nice caramelization that is called the Maillard reaction for anybody who is wondering about that kind of stuff. Okay, so we got our fajita veggies. We're just going to set these off to the side. <clears throat> We've got our chicken. I'm going to double check, make sure it's done perfectly. Taste test. Okay, now I'm getting excited. So I'm going to take the same pan that I had the chicken in. It's already got some grease in it. I'm going to turn it up on a yeah, medium to medium low. I don't want to overdo this, and I'll explain why in a minute. But we're going to get this ready. Now, in the meantime, let's see. Let's set that one there. And because I probably won't be able to do this quite fast enough. These new pans heat up so much faster than pans that I used to have. Shout out to my parents for the Christmas gift of these pans. I'm still getting used to how quickly they heat up on this stove. So... I'm going to go ahead and make the guacamole real quickly. That way it's ready to go, and then we'll make the quesadillas, and the last thing we'll do is make the sauce. Awesome. And for mm. people just uh, tuning in, can you kind of go over what it is you're making, babe? Absolutely. We are doing a keto and carnivore quesadilla, and I'm doing keto guacamole and a beautiful chipotle cream sauce to dip the quesadillas in. So stick around for that one because that's honestly the best part of the quesadilla is the sauce that I'm making. <clears throat> In my opinion, anyway. It's it's pretty amazing. Not mm -hmm. not gonna lie. Um, <clears throat> let's see here. We got we got a lot of good questions. Uh, are you ready for maybe a question or two? I'm or? ready. I'm just gonna start cutting up uh, some avocados here. Okay. So, um, you guys have never seen this. You go around in a circle like that, twist it in half, and then chop. Pull that out, and then don't reach from the front of the knife. Over here, don't reach from the front of the knife to grab this. Come from the back where it's not sharp and push that off into the trash. That way you don't cut yourself. Fire away on those questions there, honey. Okay. Um, Bonnie Sherwood says, I made your pancakes, which were very good. I was wondering if they have the best texture if I made all egg whites or by adding some almond or coconut flour. Um, I, you know, I don't know that one texture is better than the other one. I think they're slightly different. And I would say if you add something like the almond and coconut flour, you're going to get a slightly drier texture, which is going to be a little more reminiscent of like the country um, coarser ground pancakes that you get some places. And then with the egg white powder only, you're going to get a little smoother pancake that maybe is going to be more like a boxed pancake mix. Awesome. I think they're both really good though. I thought those pancakes were incredible. Oh, they're incredible. Uh, Speaking of the pancakes, everyone has requested it. The McGriddle, the keto and carnivore version of the McGriddle with the pancake recipe that I used, that's coming Saturday. So you guys make sure to tune in for that because how good were they? They were so good. Uh, we filmed it last night. Yeah. We ate them last night for dinner. Oh, it was amazing. It's better than the ones that come out of the drive through window. It was incredible. Tastes just like them, except better. Yes. Um, let's see here. Um, Rankin Cook wants to know, Chris, could you talk about how you are laying the flavors in this recipe? Thank you. Yeah, that's a, so that's a really cool question. I love that. Um, so the chicken has a fajita seasoning and that's basically going to be garlic, onion, a little bit of black pepper, some cumin, you know, kind of a, kind of a Mexican spice mixture. And then the fajita veggies that I have over there, I kept those pretty simple. So I've got lime in the chicken, which is gonna be tart. So I'm caramelizing the onions to make it a little sweet. Tomatoes always kind of bring that umami sort of a feel and it kind of brings things together, especially in Mexican cooking. And then I have the fire roasted jalapeno where I basically almost burnt it with the blowtorch before I cut it up. And that gives you that kind of smokiness, which is very common in, uh, in Mexican food. In, in Mexican cuisine, they tend to use a lot of open flame and roasted flavors and dried peppers that have the same kind of thing. So I'm getting all that in there. And then I have some fresh cilantro over here 
which will be going on everything as well. And then, you know, you've got, of course, cheese for your quesadilla. And then I have the cream sauce that I'm going to do over here, which I'm going to add chipotle to, to reinforce the smoky flavor. But then I'm going to add the cream element because it kind of cools off all of the spice by having that, that dairy sauce element on the top. That's a nice little uh, soften the blow of the capsaicin element. So, and then of course, you know, salt and pepper. The, the garlic is your aromatics. So when I'm putting in the garlic, that makes it smell nice and um, makes it really work. And this is the thing, when you guys cook, you have to realize there's three elements, sorry, four elements basically to how you experience food. Number one is the texture. That's the one you're gonna notice first above all things, which is why I care about the texture so much. Number two is the smell, which actually matters a great deal in how you taste food because it comes up through your sinuses and into your nose. And that's why when you get sick, sometimes your, your tastes change for a little while. And then your third main element is your taste. And the fourth is kind of an afterthought for most of us, but it's really important. And that's your visual acuity when you look at your food. So take care of all four of those and your dinner gets a lot better real fast. Mm -hmm. So I have avocado in my mortar and pestle. Um, honestly, you can do this in like a mixer or with a spoon and a bowl or you know however you want. It's not hard to mash up avocado, but I think I get the best results doing it this way. So I'm going to take lime. One, it tastes good, and two, it keeps our avocado from turning brown. So that's gonna go over top of the avocado. And if you guys don't have one of these citrus squeezers, if you use citrus, you should get one. If you do have one, remember, the lime goes in upside down and you push on the round side, not the flat cut side. You get a lot more juice out that way. Works much better. Hmm. Good deal. <clears throat> uh, Paul James Farm says, I've lost 80 pounds since May, lowered BP and joints feel better. Rock on, the joint pain change. Man, that is, that is a real special gift when you start to experience the things like the pain and joints or like mental fatigue or, you know, like those kinds of things. When those elements really start to change on keto and carnivore, that's when you really are like, oh, okay, well now I'm becoming like a little religious about this because it, it just makes such a huge impact in your life. It really does. Absolutely. Okay. So a little bit of salt goes on top, just helps us break up the avocado and we're just going to mash it together doesn't have to be perfect here. Um, Stephanie says, enjoyed your carnivore chili with a cornbread shalafel tonight. Second batch I've made. The egg yolks are weird, but incredible in it. <laughs> you know, this is kind of one of the things like we're, we're so used to cooking recipes that all work a certain way because that's just how it always has worked. But if you use similar concepts, from one recipe in a completely different recipe, because using egg yolks to thicken something like a custard is not weird, but if you use those kinds of concepts, you use it in a different recipe, you can get incredible results and you can keep it totally keto and carnivore. That's what I do is I take, you know, ideas that it's like, well, I know this from another recipe, could I get this effect, but in a completely different way in another recipe that would turn into something great. And that, uh, that exactly is, is how that happened with the egg yolks and the chili. I'm so glad you enjoy that one. I love that recipe. Oh, it's delicious. Ash probably is going to ask me to make some chili soon now. Yeah. I have my, my list of things. I'm like, hey, could you before, please? Before the weather starts to get too much warmer, she's probably going to want another batch. Yep. Sweater Although, butter. Although, honestly, she'll, she'll eat chili in the middle of the summer. She doesn't care. Yeah. She loves chili. I do. Um, Lisa Nix has a great question. Yeah. It says, are your lives always on Tuesdays at 6 p.m.? Yes. Every Tuesday, 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. That's 7 o'clock for you on the East Coast. And five or four, depending on how far west you go in the United States. And then for those of you overseas, um, I can't do that many calculations and cook at the same time, but six o'clock, 6 p.m. Tuesdays, Central Standard Time in the United States. And whatever that means for you guys, every week, same time, same Chris channel. Awesome. Yeah. Here every Tuesday. Yep, really appreciate you guys coming and hanging out with us too. It makes a lot of fun. Um, Gloria just gave you a uh, 1999 super thanks, say, uh, thanking you again. Gloria, you are so sweet. Thank you so much. You guys have no idea how much that helps when we get stuff like that. It just uh, it just helps stabilize what we're trying to do here because I won't lie, it's not cheap to buy all the stuff that I experiment with, but 
Um, but we, we just appreciate the fact the community helps us do this so we're not totally on our own. And you guys keep showing up and watching our videos. It means the world. Absolutely. All right. This is just some fresh cilantro that I'm going to add in with the guacamole because my wife might uh, walk out of the house if I try to give her guacamole that doesn't have some cilantro in it. He's not wrong. Now, you might be one of those people that hates cilantro because it's actually a genetic thing apparently. And if you hate cilantro, that's totally cool. I personally, though, I'm all about it. She loves cilantro. All about it. So when you guys are chopping herbs like this, by the way, run the knife through once. If you see one particularly large leaf and you want to cut it again, fine. But don't pile it all up and then try to go through and chop it a whole bunch unless you just have no other choice. Because if you do, it's going to bruise it and then it starts to wilt really quickly. If you just do it once like that, the the cuts are farther apart a little bit and these softer leaves like this they don't bruise up and so you can just get a lot nicer uh, final effect out of your herbs so things like cilantro and basil and those kinds of softer leaves parsley that sort of stuff mm. so we're just going to kind of mix that in and i'm going to switch over to a spatula so and you can leave this as chunky or make this as smooth as you want, which is kind of one of the reasons I really enjoy using the mortar and pestle as well, because you can decide how much you want to smash it or how much you don't want to smash it. Um, I love all the great questions, by the way. We're getting a great. lot, a lot of good ones. Fire them at me, and I'm just going to mix in those other veggies into the guacamole here. Awesome. Um, so Renee Reed wants to know, how did you get the name Chris Cooking Nashville? Yeah. Oh, boy. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So my wife is brilliant, and she is a genius when it comes to marketing because she's an independent artist. I am an independent guitar artist, although I don't focus on that very much. Um, she's an independent artist and we do all of our own marketing and branding and promotion and pay for all of the recording and like, and we do everything by ourselves. She is brilliant and she knows that having a quickly recognizable brand gets people to pay attention a lot faster. So if my goal is to go out and help as many people as I possibly can, I need people who don't know who I am to start paying attention. So when I told her that I wanted to start a YouTube channel, I said, we got to come up with something cool. And it's like, okay, well, what about what I do is different or makes it interesting where people might be willing to catch on to the brand and pay attention. We live in Nashville. I'm a professional musician. That's a guitar that was custom built for me that's up there on top of the cabinets that I don't play it anymore, but uh, I used to have an endorsement deal with a, a private guitar builder. And he made that guitar for me that has like my name and all this kind of stuff on it. I'm super into the music thing and I've been doing that all the all these years and quite honestly I think I'm better at the music than I am the cooking stuff honestly. Um, but the, the unique thing about what I do is the combination of the food and the music and the fact that I live in Nashville doing music professionally amongst the greatest musicians in the world. I mean Ash and I talk about this all the time. When you're here in Nashville you're surrounded by the best musicians in the world every day. And the whole Nashville thing is very cool I think. So. I decided that I wanted that element in my brand and it's like, well, how do I do this? And I was like, well, it's not just about keto and carnivore. It's about food. It's about weight loss and health and all these things, but I'm using food as a tool to get myself from where I am to where I want to be. So it needs to be all about the cooking and the food. And I wanted to share recipes and have a cooking show on here and all this kind of stuff when we first started talking about this. And so it just kind of fell into place. Chris cooking Nashville. It was Chris cooking in Nashville when I was thinking about it. And then I was like, now nah, we're going to take that N word out. If you're a songwriter out there, you know, you cut those extra words out that you don't need in a song. And that's what makes a hit song. So I figured it would make a hit channel as well. So it's just Chris cooking Nashville. And here we are. Love it. Big shout out to my wife for being so brilliant. Guys, does this guacamole look incredible or what? It looks amazing. Also, please don't tell people I'm smart. <laughs> uh, yes, you are very smart. She's don't, don't brilliant, lie. in fact. Don't lie. She's brilliant, in fact. Uh, okay. I just get lucky. Ooh, what's it taste like? Is it good? Is it good? Yeah, hold on, guys. Mm. I got both hands full. I can... It's the best guacamole I've ever made. Mm. It literally is the best guacamole I've ever made. Drop the spoon and get out. That That's is amazing. Good. Okay, mm. so you guys saw how I did that. Salt it to taste. You can add more salt if you want. It's just a cut-up tomato. 
uh, like a quarter of a red onion diced up fine and a handful of cilantro, salt. That's it, super simple. Doesn't have to be complicated, just get good ingredients and let them speak for themselves. Mm. Now I'm gonna come back over here and turn on these rapidly heating pans. Shout out to mom and dad for the great pans. Yep, I'm gonna turn it around like a medium because medium on this stove gets fairly hot and I don't want it to get too hot. Let me show you guys how we build the quesadillas here. So what I'm gonna do is while this is starting to heat up, I'm actually gonna go ahead and put tortillas in here and I build them two at a time. So I'll figure out the third one later. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay a tortilla in the center, right? And I'm gonna have a second one ready to go. And we're going to take our fillings and we're gonna start building the quesadilla right in the pan. Okay, so I'm gonna take chicken, put it on just half. And the idea of doing this, by the way, is a bunch of people ask me if these tortillas, the carnivore tortilla recipe of mine, would make quesadillas. So here's your answer. I'm gonna show you how to do it. So the chicken goes on, cheese, Gotta love the cheese. Gotta love the cheese. Gotta. Okay, and you wanna make sure there's plenty of stuff, but you don't wanna to totally overdo it to where it's also gonna bust out on you because then it's impossible to deal with these and it becomes a real pain in the butt. So I'll show you how we go ahead and do the, the keto one here. And then um, after the live, I'll make my carnivore one, which basically is the same thing, just no veggies. So the fajita veggies go there. And then we're gonna feel free to make your stuff work for you. So spin your pans around if you need to. Okay. So we're just gonna grab this, pull it over, and use a spatula to hold this down very carefully. Very gently, we're just gonna press that out. Just like that. Okay, and kind of slide it around a little bit if we need to. So there's that. Now here's why I build it in the pan. The second tortilla goes right on top like this. And look, now it's gonna hold it up and I'm just gonna flip it over the other way. Both of them fit perfectly inside the pan. So you just use a pan that's roughly the same size as the tortillas you're using. It makes this extremely easy. Chicken, cheese, if I can remember where I'm putting everything. <laughs> like so and veggies you got any questions for me while i'm putting these veggies on um we do let me see if i can read here okay. um angela says maybe i missed it but how do you choose a good avocado a good avocado should be very gently very very gently pressed And then, so I'm gonna turn my heat down because it's getting a little darker than I want it to, no big deal. Okay, so an avocado, when you very gently press it, should feel like it's a little soft. You don't want it squishy because if your thumb goes into it, that means it's not good. But if you have it just very lightly squishy, then that means it is ripe and beautiful. Mm. This all smells so amazing, by the way. Uh, Maritza Garza says, I'm so ready to make the carnivore mashed potatoes. Yeah, those are so good, y'all. Yeah. You have not tried the carnivore mashed potatoes. You have got to give them a shot. Absolutely. They are so, so good. Um, Beth Mahoney says, I know Ash is from Bakersfield. Where is Chris from? Chris is from a little tiny town in southeast Indiana near Cincinnati, Ohio called Sunman and there is not much out there. It's 800 people in that town. There's no stoplights, there's one hometown grocery store, and there's not particularly anything else special. So <laughs> it's uh, not a bad place to be from, not a place I would probably ever want to stay. Certainly not a place that I would ever be able to stay and do music, that's for sure. Absolutely. But um, it's a great place to be from. There's great people there. Absolutely. 
Uh, Kathy Hume just gave you a 1999 super thanks. Oh, Kathy, you are super sweet. It says, thank you for investing your time to help others. You are truly an inspiration. I would love a carnivore jambalaya recipe. I oh, would love one too. Yeah, so here's the deal. So I've actually got a carnivore rice recipe, which means the whole Cajun food thing is definitely in my uh, interest and something I'm thinking about. So I'm working in my mind to see what I can come up with for some of those Cajun things. So you keep your eye on the channel. That just may well be coming sooner than later. Absolutely. So, but thank you so much for your support. It is truly an honor and a pleasure to get to do what we do here. And it means so, so, so much to us that you guys come and support what we do because I, we can't do it without you, so. Cool. Uh, Crystal Hamilton says, Guac looks incredible. My boys are loving your burger buns. Been making them on repeat. Thank you so much. Those burger buns are good, guys. I I just absolutely love those. And here's the deal. Everyone always asks, like, you know, does your stuff taste like eggs when it has eggs in it, which those do. My wife hates things that taste like eggs unless they're scrambled eggs. So if she eats it, you know it doesn't taste like eggs because she, I mean, she will, she spit things out before. Yeah. Like literally spits them out because she does not like them, and, and which is totally fine. I, she hasn't spit any of my stuff out because I don't feed her any of that stuff until I've tasted it and I know it doesn't taste like eggs. But she spit some other stuff out before. <laughs> I swear I'm not picky. I, I just know what I oh, like. Oh, no, no. It's not, it's not in any way about being picky. That's just one particular flavor she does yeah. not like. I love eggs, like scrambled eggs <coughs> or when it's eggs, but I just don't like foods that are pretending to be other foods. Right, right. Totally get it. Pet peeve of mine. Totally um, get it. By the way, there's a lot of folks on here. Uh, we got Maritza just saying, just joining, but <coughs> very interested in this way of eating. Yeah. A lot of people are saying it's like their first live stream. Well, guys, um, welcome. Yeah, please welcome them. Kind of explain what we're doing. And yeah, what so we're about. I'm doing keto and carnivore quesadillas. They just came out of the oven, uh, not out of the oven, out of the skillet. So uh, these two right here are the keto quesadillas, and they got a little darker than I wanted them to, but it's okay. They're going to taste great. So don't freak out, guys. I make mistakes in the kitchen too. Pan was just a little too hot. So that's the carnivore quesadilla. This is just the chicken and cheese mixture. This is chicken cheese and the fajita veggies that I made live for you guys. So go back and check out how I did that if you're doing the keto thing, because believe me, they're incredible. I've got my stove turned off. I've got some extra chicken and cheese and veggies and stuff here that uh, my wife will probably make a taco salad out of if I know her. Yeah. And uh, I'm married to her. I'm pretty sure I know her well enough to say that. So I've got all that, have the handmade guacamole, very, very simple, but amazing recipe. And now I'm gonna show you guys how we do the chipotle cream, which quite honestly, this is the best part of the entire video. So if you're here now, even if you tuned in late, this is the part you really wanna be here for anyway. This is one part mayonnaise to about one and a half parts sour cream. I have a butter mayo recipe, spreadable butter mayo. You can make that, put that in there and then about one and a half parts sour cream. You want a little more sour cream than mayo. And then right here in this container, I have a chipotle pepper that has been packed in adobo. And I'm going to chop that up. It's got a little bit of like some onions and stuff that it's packed with as well. But I'm just gonna run the knife through this in that direction. And then in this direction, and you can see there's little seeds. Now, you can use more chipotle if you want, but let me tell you, these things can get real spicy, so be careful with that. Um, I think you'll really get a kick out of this. Yeah. Um, Don VC says, so I'm watching Chris cook live and my husband walks in the room and starts watching. Guess what he is cooking right now. Thanks for all you do, Chris and Ash. And she also gave us a $10 super Oh thanks. my gosh, you are so sweet. I'm so glad. Guys, I love inspiring people to do this stuff. It's truly one of the best things I get to do with my time on, my, on a daily basis. And it really just makes me so happy to know that people enjoy this kind of stuff. So thank you guys. Thank you for supporting what I do. Thank you for watching. Thank you for sharing and liking, hitting the thumbs up, commenting below, all that stuff. It just tells YouTube that this is really cool. So, and if y'all have social media, you can put the link for this video on your social media and let people know we're here every week. So this is the sauce. Sour cream, we've got the mayo, we've got this chipotle pepper in here, right? I'm gonna stir this together really quickly. And then we're gonna correct the seasoning. 
Guys, always taste, always, always, always taste your food. Taste little things, make sure the seasoning is how you like it. Add little bits of salt at a time. Do it one step at a time. Don't try to do it all at the same time. And that way you can more properly season your food and you can double check it by tasting it before you serve it. Make sure it doesn't need a little more. Awesome. Okay, so we're just gonna stir that together. Sorry for my finger. Hmm. It's stupid how good that stuff is. So we're gonna do a little pinch of salt like that. And then this is just kind of the way I like to do it. You don't have to do any of this. It's good just the way it is, but I think it's really nice to step it up just a little bit more. There it is. With chili powder, garlic and onion powder, and paprika. So I'm going to add a little bit of paprika. It's like probably a teaspoon and this is probably gonna be uh, maybe a half of a cup of sour cream and then a third of a cup of mayonnaise, something like that. I'm not really measuring any of this guys and you don't really need to either. Just taste it as you go and adjust it for how you like it. Garlic powder, onion powder, like that. Mix that all together. This is another thing you'll see me do to make your job easier. When I'm mixing, my spatula goes this way, my hand goes this way when I need to scrape down the side of a bowl. That way I don't have to go like all the way around every single time and then turn the bowl and go every single time. It just makes things faster to have little things like that in the kitchen going on. Absolutely. Um, Debbie2AT says, oh, Almost missed you. Late, but I'm here with you from British Columbia, Canada. Wow. Love your content. Thank you for all you do. Oh, Debbie, thank you for being here. We can't do this without you. We really appreciate the fact that even if you were late, you were here. That's cool. We're so glad. And you can always go back and watch it after the fact anyway. And we appreciate that. So. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> I got that on camera. <laughs> That's the closest you're ever gonna see me get to dancing, so wow. enjoy it while you got it. Savor that moment. Okay, that is really good. It's really nice and smoky. Now, something else you can do, and I don't always do this, but I think for the quesadillas, this will be really good. If you wanna up the chipotle level, get the Tabasco chipotle, and you can add a tablespoon or so of that in here. And it offers a little bit more of a tanginess because of the hot sauce but it's not a super spicy hot sauce, but because it's Chipotle, it also adds this really nice enhanced smokiness that Tabasco just does a great job of getting in there. And best thing is zero carbs. Mm -hmm. um, honey, I got lots of people asking about if you have a cookbook. Yeah, I don't have a cookbook currently. I am going to work on one. Um, if you ask that in any of my other videos or watch my live streams, you'll see I get that question a lot. Um, I just, unfortunately right now, I just work too much to be able to get the time together to sit and do a cookbook right. Cause it takes a long time to write a book and publish it and you know, the pictures, I mean, all the different things that go with it. As soon as I can afford to quit my day job, that is going to be project number one. So if you guys would like to help me get there, you can go support me on YouTube or uh, you can join my YouTube memberships. You can buy me a coffee. I have that link down below. You can join my Patreon all of those extra members on there and the money that they give. That's what helps me run this channel. And the closer we get to uh, this being a full-time gig, the closer I get to being able to write the cookbook. So all those things are there. There's also super chats and super stickers. If you just want to say thanks and throw a couple bucks my way, it just helps me keep doing this. Um, if not, just sharing my videos and all that stuff is also very much appreciated. Helps me grow the channel so that I can get to a point where I can do this full-time hopefully. And, and uh, well, this in music and teaching guitar lessons and the other things that I do, but um, at least be able to get out of that day job so I have more time to dedicate to you guys and come up with more of these cool recipes. Absolutely. All right, and there is our chipotle cream sauce. So we have chipotle cream, we have guacamole, we have some beautiful quesadillas, and <clears throat> even if they are just a little bit darker, I promise they're not gonna taste bad. Here's the thing that I wanna show you guys because I've seen other people do keto quesadillas. I've never seen carnivore. I have seen keto quesadillas, or I guess maybe I did see one carnivore quesadilla one time, but this was the thing that really struck me with the carnivore quesadilla that I saw someone else do, um, even keto quesadillas. A lot of times they go to cut 
the tortilla and it's very soft and everything falls apart. So I just wanted to show you guys that if I cut this quesadilla the way you would see it at a uh, international fast food corporation that is known for Mexican food, there is my quesadilla. Oh, wow. It does not fall apart. It does not flop over. The quesadilla is crispy. Would you like to taste a quesadilla? Yes. 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 Okay. Do you want oh. some cream sauce to go along with it? Do you want to just stick with some guacamole at the moment? What are you, uh, oh, what are you I, feeling? I'm going to do some of the chipotle cream okay. sauce. Okay. You want some That's... chipotle cream sauce? Yeah. All right. We're just going to slide everything over here for Miss Ash to give this a try. Love it. So there is quesadilla cut. We're going to get a little sauce cup for her here because love my wife more than anything in the world and I just want to make her happy and I know a cup sauce a sauce cup of this chipotle cream will hopefully make her very happy oh you're very sweet it does make me very happy yeah. uh, all the time right there you go ah thank you let me see if I can free up one hand oh you gonna hold, oh yeah I can I can hold it okay cool thank you mm -hmm. all right Ooh. All right, guys. Sorry for the shaky camera work here. You have a you have an amateur holding the camera. Oh, I don't now. know about that. Oh yeah. I usually can't feel my my hand when we're done. Mm. <laughs> I'm done. Now I know it looks a little dark, but does it taste too dark to you? No, it no, doesn't. No, no. Okay. Yeah, it those doesn't. proteins they look a little bit dark sometimes, but even when they're dark like that, they still taste really good. Just mm. be careful they don't become black and you don't burn them, but. No, it's honestly, oh my gosh, that's so good. Yeah, look at that though. Like it literally just holds together. It does not fall apart. And this is the one that has like the veggies in it. Yeah. So I mean, you have extra weight and it's a little bit wetter because of the veggies. Like, you know, that's a completely different thing. <laughs> Beth that's... says, happy wife, happy life. You got that right. Yeah. Mm. I'm going to literally eat all of this. I'm so sorry. This is yeah. delicious. I also love how you used uh, chicken thigh meat. Yeah. A little juicier. Yeah, The veggies Much more are tender. super good. This sauce, though, y'all, is so good. Yeah, the sauce is killer. It mm. is the bomb. Uh, do you want to hand me back the camera? And yeah, yeah. You take a carnivore and we. Yep, absolutely. One last bite. Yep, I'm gonna take some of your chipotle sauce here too because sure. it's just so good. So mm -hmm. yeah, guys, this so this is the middle part of the quesadilla, which is the softest part. Like, that's what I'm talking about. That's what these tortillas will do, and it's just incredible. You don't have to have floppy, squishy tortillas. Ain't no one want that. Nope. It's better than any Mexican restaurant you'll ever go to. I'm telling you. You could give that to anyone. No one would know that that's not a tortilla. They would not know that it's not just a regular quesadilla made with a regular tortilla. It's that good. Oh, it's delicious. It is, it is absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. Well, we're going to have a really good time eating all of this, but before we do all of that, do we have questions or things that we can yeah. talk to people about? Um, a couple of things. Okay. One, um, John and Janie's Journey gave you a $10 super thanks. It says, appreciate your time, devotion to help others, and cool recipes. Mm. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you because I cannot do this without you guys. Believe me, I've cooked for a long time and I've tried to figure this all out for a long time. And it's so much harder when you don't have people supporting your work on this kind of stuff to find the time to do it. So thank you guys for your support for everything that you do. And that super chat is just so, so, so appreciated from you. Absolutely. Um, hun, before we go to, there's um, just a lot of folks on here that yeah. are either new to your channel or they're new to... Uh, keto carnivore Absolutely. and whatnot. Could you maybe just kind of explain your channel and what we do and kind of Absolutely. what we have going on? <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> so if you guys are new here, my name is Chris and I am a professional musician in Nashville, Tennessee, but I have taken back control of my health by using keto and carnivore foods. My wife has done the same. I have lost over 130 pounds. She has lost over a hundred, I believe. And we have just completely transformed our lives using keto and carnivore recipes and understanding the health impacts of what eating too many carbohydrates does. So 
There's a lot of different stuff. I have health vlogs from over a year ago that you can go back and watch the journey over the last year that I put on uh, YouTube and I'm just continuing that for you guys. Uh, I also do recipe creation, trying to create keto and carnivore versions of all of these staple foods that we're all used to eating. Because here's the deal. Ideally, yes, we would just be able to turn it off like a light switch and we would no longer want to eat all of the stuff that's bad for us in the world. Guess what? That's not the way the world works. It would be nice, but it's just not. And sometimes transitional recipes like these kinds of things that remind you of a quesadilla are really helpful. And you're not alone in this. This is why I put everything that I do online and it's why I develop all these recipes. I wanna help you guys if you are interested in keto carnivore or if you're on keto or carnivore and you wanna be able to make great food, this is how you do it and I'm creating these recipes for you guys so that you can not only have it for yourself, but you can encourage things like your family, your kids, your parents, your brother, your sister, your mom, your dad, friends, anyone that you know, I mean, anyone around you. You can feed them this stuff and it tastes so good that they immediately are like, you know, maybe I could do this keto carnivore thing too. Or if you're, say, a housewife or a house husband who is cooking for a whole family that comes home at the end of the day, um, if you're the person in the house that makes all the meals with friends, like what, whatever your case may be, if you cook stuff that is so good that everyone can sit around the table and eat together, culturally that's really important. And that way you can eat what's good for you without losing what's good for your soul. And I think food is a really important thing culturally and although we need to get it under control and not have the terrible carbohydrate addictions and eat some of the junk food that you know, has made us all so fat and sick and nearly dead here in the United States and around the world, we still wanna be able to enjoy the culture of good food and this is how we do it. So I'm just working to create these recipes to try to help as many people as I possibly can and I hope that this just makes a huge difference for you guys and um, that's why I'm here. That's what I do. So uh, I'm just sharing everything that I do, putting my whole life on the line here uh, on YouTube and letting you guys see every little bit of my journey, the ups, the downs, and all of the recipes that are in between. That's what we do. I love it. And then occasionally we share a little bit of our music. Go to ashtaylor.com and you can hear what we do there as well because that's why we actually moved to Nashville, both of us. So, and then this beautiful woman met me at a guitar center and her life was never the same. <laughs> that, that's true. That is yeah. true. Yeah. Awesome. Any other questions or anything today? Um, you know, honey, a lot of people are just saying that they really have enjoyed this live stream and how great it is. Um, 22Q Cat says, best keto slash carnivore recipes on the web right now. Oh, Lynn, you are so sweet. Lynn has been here from the beginning. I just posted yesterday um, a surprise keto recipe video drop that I did jalapeno poppers, bacon wrapped jalapeno poppers for keto people. And she commented on it and said, this looks so good. It takes me down memory lane from the old one because that was actually the first recipe that I had posted on this channel when it was, it was a terrible video and I had no clue what I was doing on YouTube. And I don't know if I know what I'm doing now, but I'm at least a little better now than I was then. And I told her when she commented on it, I replied to her and I said, Lynn, you're probably one of the few people who was here at the beginning when I posted that first recipe. And there's not a lot of people that have seen that first one. If you go watch it, I apologize for that video, but, uh, but she was one of the first people on the channel and she's been here ever since. And we just, we love Lynn, she's great. Absolutely. Hey, speaking of um, recipes really quick, I apologize, yep. I'm trying to uh, read and run the camera yeah. and all, but um, I saw someone, I believe it was <coughs> maybe Mr. Jones was talking about ice cream yeah. And a carnivore ice cream, and I know what's in the freezer right now. Yes. So do you want to tell them what we're going to be working on? Yes. So I have a special ice cream recipe that's in the freezer. I can't tell you any more about it than that. Um, I can't tell you what it is made with, but I can tell you that it's going to be very good. And if you guys hang out here on the channel, I will be dropping that ice cream recipe. And although some of the stuff that's in there may not be something that you want, the base recipe of that ice cream is my typical approach to making ice cream no matter what I'm doing. It's no churn, it's super easy to just put it in the freezer. I think you guys will really, really enjoy it. So um, just keep an eye on the channel because I have an ice cream recipe coming soon. Awesome. Um, Carol, by the way, gave us a uh, $50 super thanks just because you two are the bomb is what Carol, she said. Carol, you're the bomb. You are actually the bomb. Um, because we cannot do this without people like you and it, truthfully it, it just it literally means so much there's actually there's a health vlog video 
where I was talking about the, it actually may not have been a health vlog video, it might have been a Patreon video. I think it was perhaps a Patreon video for my YouTube and, and Patreon members. I was thanking the people in the band, my Patreon and YouTube members, for all of the things that they do because basically my Patreon grew to a point where um, Ash was able to quit her day job and we weren't like gonna be completely sunk by that because we had enough money coming in where her not working at her day job was gonna be okay. And for you guys who don't really maybe know about this, the reason that was so important to me is she actually had a guy try to break her hand at work and it was not the first time she had somebody act like this because where she was working at was a really bad part of town. Um, and we were trying to get her out of that job because it was just getting more and more unsafe all the time. And she called me in tears about this whole thing that had happened because she did not get support from the owner of the business. Um, just really a ridiculous situation. And I told her to walk in, quit, and never go back because no amount of money was worth her not coming home because she was dead. And when that happened, we had enough Patreon members that we were able to keep afloat without her having to go work that job. She wasn't making near enough money for the work she was doing anyway, but our Patreon and YouTube members basically saved my life. So uh, when I say that you guys really matter to us and we appreciate you and you're our family and, and this is just, you know, so much of a blessing for us, that's, that's the kind of thing I'm talking about. Like we, we, you know, we're not rolling in dough over here and everything you guys do to help support us just means more than I could ever put into words. Absolutely. Especially when I know my wife's not going to get killed at work because she can actually focus on being a musician and we can do this kind of stuff. She helps me with this and she does her music stuff. We're booking gigs and, you know, we're doing our thing. So it, it does my heart a lot of good to know when I go to work every day that she is safe and able to work on the businesses that we're trying to run. Yeah, very yeah. appreciative. So thank um, you guys. Many people are asking, where's Mel? She just, she just graced us there, with her presence. There she is. She finally she's, woke up off the couch because she knows it's dinner time. Exactly, exactly. Um, folks she's are, already been fed, so so don't anybody, yeah, don't don't anybody feel bad for her. She's <laughs> yeah. already been fed her homemade, cooked-from-scratch food today, so she's, she's good. She's good. Uh, folks are super excited about ice cream, it seems like. Yeah, that's going to so be a fun So that would be one. good. And can you remind them what you're releasing this Saturday? Yes, this coming Saturday, we are doing the Carnivore and Keto McGriddle knockoff. And it is amazing. It tastes just like the one that comes out of the drive through window, except it actually tastes better. But it, it just, it, they are so good. I knew they were going to be good, but even after we made them, even I was like, oh man, these things are good. So awesome. it's going to be, it's really going to be fantastic. Yes. I'm, I'm, I was very excited about that and it did not disappoint. Yes. Awesome. Well, hun, I think that's pretty much it. Um, okay. Is there anything else you'd like to say before we hang it up? I don't think so. I just love and appreciate you guys. Um, oh, shout out to Keto Chow for their salty electrolyte packets. Um, this is exactly what I'm drinking in this and drinking on a daily basis. So we actually ran out of salty packets. That was my fault. I didn't order them fast enough. We ran out and we used some from another competitor that we had left over from when we used to drink theirs. And we were about, what, three or four days without salty packets, I guess, and yeah. just trying to use the competitors. Uh, both of us ended up having cramps like in our legs and our back and we felt run down. We felt, <coughs> excuse me. Nashville allergies, they're real. So bad. <clears throat> we felt like we couldn't drink enough water. So you're gonna have to finish the story. <laughs> <clears throat> I gotcha. Yeah, <clears throat> so we, uh, we ran out of salty and uh, we just were <clears throat> really, really struggling. We both felt terrible. We had just cramps and I could tell <clears throat> I didn't have the same amount of energy. And uh, <clears throat> we went to, uh, we had like leftover packets from a competitor uh, still in our house. So since we ran out of salty, we're like, we'll, we'll drink these. And uh, they did not taste very good. No, they tasted terrible. They clumped. Uh, we did not feel good drinking them. I couldn't drink enough of them to get rid of the cramps in my calves and to make myself feel better. And I just had no energy. So if you guys like another competitor and they work for you, I think that's great, fantastic. But shout out to Keto Chow for creating salty that literally saves my life. Um, and just for being a great company. So I have a Keto Chow link in the description box down below. 
And if you want to try it out, you can actually use my discount code, get a 10% off your first order there. So you can try the salty. They are my favorite. I think they taste the best, they don't clump, and they make us feel better than any of the other ones we've tried. And we've tried a number of them. So and they're my favorite. Just to make sure that we don't run out again, because that was literally terrible. <clears throat> this all showed up at our house. That's like <laughs> six bags of salty. Yeah. We're stocked. We're yeah. ready. We're ready. Yeah. And I also promised Ash as soon as we open the last bag, I will immediately order more. So, but shout out to Lynette from uh, Keto Chow for helping get some rushed out to me and, and saving our lives. We appreciate her a lot. So, but yeah, I think that's all I've got. Thank you guys so much for watching. All of my links are down below. And if you have any questions about anything, you guys know where to find me. I'm always here. So thank you for watching. Thank you for just all of your support. Make sure to like and share this video and subscribe if you haven't already. We, we really appreciate that. And uh, we're at pushing 73,000 subscribers and I'm getting close to 3 million views on my channel. So there's going to be some celebrations coming when we hit 100,000 subscribers. And when we hit 3 million views, let's see which one we can get to first. So. Guys, thank you for everything that you do. Thank you for watching us. Go make some quesadillas just like this and enjoy these amazing keto, carnivore, low-carb foods to the very fullest. Make sure your family enjoys them too. I love you guys. Thank you for being here. This is Chris Cook in Nashville. Eat your meat. Love your life. Make some quesadillas. And Ash and I are going to see you guys here in our kitchen backstage for another recipe. Bye. Bye.